Hi, I'm Nigel, and this is Nigel Goes to Space. Today, I've got a true or false for you. Think about this. Is it true or false that once there were over 60,000 jellyfish orbiting the Earth? Sounds a bit weird, but that is absolutely true. In the 1990s, NASA launched a space shuttle mission with jellyfish on board, thousands and thousands of them. I'll come back to tell you about the jellyfish later, but animals have always pioneered the way into space. The first mammal to go into space way back in 1949 was a monkey called Albert II. He was Albert II because Albert I was launched on a rocket and never even made it to space. Albert number two got to space, but sadly, in those days of primitive rocket technology, he didn't land safely back on the Earth again. And while the Americans were launching monkeys, the Russians were sending dogs into space. They thought dogs would be more placid uh, rather than monkeys, which are always a bit active, of course. Uh, and the first dog that went into space was called Laika. She was launched on a second Sputnik. The first Sputnik, the first Earth satellite, was unmanned. It had nothing on board apart from a transmitter that went beep, 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 beep. But the very second satellite to go around the Earth, Sputnik 2, carried a beautiful little Mongol dog, Laika. Laika was a little stray dog that the Russian Space Agency found on the streets of Moscow. They preferred stray dogs to go into space because they had the stamina to deal with difficult conditions. The cold and obviously eking out a living on the streets made them ideal for the severe conditions of space rather than putting a domesticated dog up there. She went into space in 1957 on Sputnik 2. It was never designed she would come back to Earth. She was supposed to last 10 days. She had supplies of food and water up there with her but uh, part of the heat shield broke away when she went into space and her capsule overheated, so she didn't live more than two days in space. But it was much better news for another pair of Russian dogs, Belka and Strelka, who went up later. Uh, they were all female, by the way. The Russians preferred female dogs. They thought they had a better temperament for working with than male dogs. Uh, Belka and Strelka went into space before the first human. They came back down again and Strelka was then mated with uh, another space dog, uh, a male dog who never went into space, but he was with the Russian Space Agency. They had a litter of puppies, and uh, Khrushchev presented one of those puppies to Pre American President John F. Kennedy for his family. Uh, and that little girl puppy then had a relationship in the White House with one of the Kennedy's dogs and produced a litter. And the descendants of those space dogs are still living in the world today. Anything dogs can do, cats can do better, of course, and cats have been trained to go into space. This lovely little video shows some researchers taking a cat up on a zero-gravity flight. So they're not actually in space, they're on an aeroplane ride, which gives them the feeling of space. And everyone knows that cats, when they fall, twist around to land on their feet. But if they're let go in wakelessness, they've got nowhere to fall. So these poor moggies are trying to work out what on earth it's all about. In these experiments, you can see the disorientation resulting when an animal is suddenly placed in a weightless state. Cats, when dropped under normal conditions, will invariably rotate their bodies longitudinally in midair and land on their feet. This automatic reflex action is almost completely lost under weightlessness. Now, there has been a cat in space. In 1963, the French Space Agency launched Philisette, and she went up into just a little hop into space and back down again. Uh, she was fated as a national hero, but unfortunately, uh, the scientists wanted to find out the effect that weightlessness had had on her, so she ended up uh, being dissected. The Americans carried on with monkeys, and in 1961, they launched the first chimp into space. Now, he wasn't just there to test out the life support systems and see how animals cope with zero gravity. He was the first astronaut. He was trained on the ground to press levers in response to certain stimuli. And if he got it right, then he'd get a banana pellet. And when he went up on his flight, he was up there, perfectly conscious, and they sent him his commands. He pressed the levers, he got it right, and he got fed his banana pellets. And NASA took that to mean that your mental abilities weren't impaired by weightlessness. So they, when they sent the first human astronauts up, those people would be able to respond to commands just as well as if they're on the Earth. And who was the first to win the space race of the 1960s? What were the first creatures to go around the moon, around the back of the moon, and then come back down to Earth again? Was it the Apollo 8 crew who went around the moon? 
No, they were beaten to it by a pair of Russian tortoises who went on a mission called Zond 5 around the, Earth, around the moon, came back down safely to Earth again. In fact, there have been dozens of different kinds of creatures that have gone up into space. Everything from scorpions and cockroaches to guinea pigs and rabbits, frogs, newts, moths, butterflies. One of my favourite is a pair of spiders called Arabella and Anita. They went up there to spin webs. Now on Earth, a spider will fall under gravity to make some of the strands when she's setting up a web for the first time. And amazingly, Arabella, even though she's weightless, managed to make a near perfect spider's web. But back to those jellyfish. In the 1990s, NASA launched two and a half thousand jellyfish up on the space shuttle in plastic bags of warm water. And the idea was they'd reproduce and grow. And that's how they ended up with over 60,000 baby jellyfish. And the reason was to investigate how jellyfish orientate themselves in the water. To stay upright, they have little bony structures in their cells which tell them which way gravity works. What they found was the baby jellyfish born in space when they came down were not able to orientate themselves in the same way. As somebody said, it's as if the baby jellyfish had vertigo once they came back down to the earth. And that's important to us because we have similar bony structures in our ears which tell us which way is up. And when human babies one day are born in space, it's uh, warning us that perhaps when those babies or children eventually come down to our own planet Earth, they won't be able to balance properly. There are lots more amazing stories of animals in space. So if you'd like me to talk about them a bit more, or if you've got any favourite animal stories that you'd like to share with me, please post a comment along with any other questions about space or astronomy. Subscribe to Naked Science and join me again for Nigel Goes to Space.